Assets are a big pool in one's wealth and status in the community. Surely, a thick portfolio can attract anyone's attention and interest regardless of other matters. But be cautious, for not every portfolio is the same. There are leveraged portfolios and unleveraged portfolios. They have different meanings and content, so you might want to keep watching to sort out which of these cases you have or which of them you would like to have. Welcome back to our fiery channel. This is FIRE. Here, we bring you wealth tips, financial advice, cryptocurrency information, and updates on the financial world that you should definitely catch up with. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and ring that bell to get notified every time we upload a new video. We make sure we only bring you the best of content. Portfolios and Realty they are relatively essential when you are talking about a man's fortunes. In this episode of FIRE, we will find out what a leveraged and an unleveraged portfolio is. We will list their common grounds as well as their differences. Well, share your thoughts in the comments below and watch till the end to find out how you can be financially independent, successful, and wealthy. Not a typical portfolio. Before everything else, let's first discuss what a portfolio is. It is not a usual portfolio that people, particularly students, use for trivial content and papers. It may contain papers, but these are definitely confidential and authentic ones. A portfolio consists of financial investments, such as stocks, bonds, commodities, cash and cash equivalents, as well as closed-end funds and exchange-traded funds FTS. People commonly assume that stocks, bonds and cash form the foundation of a portfolio. While this is frequently the case, it does not have to be the norm. A portfolio may include a diverse variety of assets, such as real estate, art, and private investments. You can opt to maintain and administer your portfolio yourself, or you can have it managed by a money manager, financial advisor, or another finance expert. It is highly suggested that you keep track of your portfolio and investments so you have a record of your assets. Think of an investment portfolio as a pie that has been cut into wedge-shaped pieces, each reflecting a particular asset class and or kind of investment. Although stocks, bonds, and cash are commonly regarded as the essential building blocks of a portfolio, you may create a portfolio with a variety of assets, including real estate, gold stocks, various types of bonds, paintings, and other art collectibles. At this point, you can invest in things and collectibles that you really aim for and are interested in. Leverage Portfolio What is leverage and when does a portfolio become leveraged? Leverage arises when borrowed funds are utilized to invest and develop a company's asset base in order to create profits. Leverage is also used to define the debt load a company utilizes to fund assets. With this logic, when a property or investment is considered highly leveraged, it has more debt than equity. Therefore, assets are acquired by utilizing big loans. A leveraged portfolio is one in which an investor utilizes borrowed funds to purchase part of their stocks. This has some clear risk because it might result in a loss and the investor would be responsible for repaying the borrowed funds. On the other hand, the security invested in it may yield a profit, allowing the investor to simply pay off the loan and earn a profit. Not a lot of people are fond of having leverage, but there are businessmen who take these risks just to possess estates and materials. These entrepreneurs must have a great sense of wisdom in order to navigate whether the profit will be large enough to pay off the loan and have more resources. It could actually be nice to have a leveraged portfolio because you can then invest in more properties when you have greater capital left in your savings. Unleveraged Portfolio This other portfolio is pretty much the opposite of the first one. An unleveraged portfolio operates without the need for borrowed funds. It indicates that the firm is only employing cash contributed by investors during the company's inception or when investors pour further funds into the company or purchase the company's shares. These investors are the company's equity shareholders. Equity stockholders own a portion of the company and have a residual claim on it. This means that all the money spent on the assets are the company's principal funds. Consequently, the corporation is under no legal responsibility to pay the equity stockholders because they give the funds for the company's attainment. The head of the company will then decide where these funds shall go. The inclusion of an unleveraged portfolio and capital decreases the company's risk, but it also limits the company's access to funds for potential investments. This means that there are fewer properties you can acquire, because with this type of method, that could depend on how big the investments of the equity shareholders can give. Which of these portfolios do you have or want to have? Let us know in the comments, we will be reading them. Before revealing the second half of this video, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button and share fire with your friends. Spread the good news of financial independence and success. Comparing these approaches 
A leveraged and unleveraged portfolio are both presented in terms of measuring one's capabilities regarding money and assets. Both of them also have advantages and disadvantages, and it's up to you to decide which risk you're willing to take. They are more different than they are alike. We have found seven differences, and they are as follows. First is the fact that they are opposite in nature. A company can be classified as leveraged if it operates on borrowed funds. In contrast, an unleveraged portfolio is one in which a corporation operates without the utilization of borrowed funds. From this information, we can conclude that they have different sources of funds. One of them is borrowed, and the other is collected from a group of investors. Second, we can say that a leveraged portfolio has by far a higher risk, since, in the event of a loss, the corporation is obligated to pay the interest to the lenders for the borrowed money. This means that you need to make ends meet by the profit you are gaining, or else you cannot pay your liabilities. In contrast, an unleveraged portfolio is deemed low risk because the corporation is not obligated to repay in the event of a loss. The equity stockholders are not expecting anything if the assets are low in profit. Third, the leveraged portfolio assists the firm in increasing its total capital and even allows the organization to capitalize on an opportunity with accessible cash from borrowed funds. An unleveraged portfolio, on the other hand, means that the company is only using capital invested by investors during the company's structure or when investors infuse more funds into the company or purchase the company's stocks, limiting the capital and availability of money for any opportunity investment. Fourth, when it comes to the leverage portfolios, the corporation is legally obligated to repay the lenders. Banks that have granted a term loan or debentures, as well as preferred shareholders, may be considered lenders. Even if the corporation suffers a loss, it is still obligated to compensate them. In the event of an unleveraged portfolio, the corporation is under no legal duty to repay the equity stockholders. It is entirely up to the corporation whether or not to pay out a dividend to equity owners. Fifth, a leveraged portfolio protects the firm from taxation by calculating the tax to be paid after paying the interest on the term loans, debentures, or bonds, which minimizes the amount of tax payable. They make up for these taxes quickly after getting the borrowed funds. In contrast, there is no such incentive accessible to the corporation with an unleveraged portfolio. Sixth, the leveraged portfolio, in terms of bankruptcy, gives the lenders first claim on assets. If the firm declares bankruptcy, the lenders will receive the borrowed sum first. Even if the corporation has sold off its assets, it must repay the loan sum. In the case of the company's unleveraged portfolio, equity stockholders have also claimed it, but on a residual basis. In the event of insolvency, the company must pay the equity owners when all obligations have been met. The last difference is the fact that a leveraged portfolio might be a mix of equities and fixed income funds. Fixed income funds might be term loans, debentures, bonds, or preference shares. An unleveraged portfolio, on the other hand, consists solely of equity. The equity might be the capital invested by investors during the company's founding or the acquisition of the company's shares. We can readily distinguish between leveraged and unleveraged portfolios now. Leveraged capital can be a useful way to increase a company's overall capital, but it should be kept within the company's payment ability. There are several options for the company to choose an unleveraged portfolio. If a firm has a healthy bottom line, is profitable, and has the capacity to repay its loans, it should include an unleveraged portfolio since it provides a tax shelter. This also depends on the company's risk-taking capabilities. If it is risk-averse, it'll choose the unleveraged portfolio. Both offer advantages and disadvantages. The organization must choose based on their needs after weighing all of the factors. Alright guys, we're wrapping up today's video, and we hope you enjoyed today's topic. Thanks for visiting our channel. This is FIRE, your channel on wealth tips, financial advice, cryptocurrency information, and updates on the financial world that you should definitely catch up with. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button and check out more videos like this one on the FIRE channel. Thanks for watching, and of course, see you in the next video.